Hi fellow prospective students, congratulations on being accepted to study law at Stellenbosch. Congratulations on being provisionally accepted to Stellenbosch University. Congratulations on your provisional acceptance to Stellenbosch University. Hello everyone and welcome to Marty's 101. Good day, I am Nicholas Smith, a professor in the Faculty of Law and also Dean of this faculty that celebrated its centenary in 2021. It has been the intellectual home of many graduates over this time. We received more than 13,000 applications from prospective law students from all over our country and even further afield for law programs in 2023. I therefore wish to start by congratulating you on receiving and accepting a provisional offer of acceptance to study law at Stellenbosch University in 2023. You have made an important choice to apply to Stellenbosch University and now you can join a law faculty with a consistent and high standard of legal education over the past 100 years. Perhaps you already know that our faculty is made up out of three academic departments Mercantile Law, Private Law and Public Law, as well as the Issue Law Clinic and Centre for Social Justice. Other than our more rural and distinctly student town setting in the beautiful Cape Winelands, which promises an excellent student experience, I am confident that there are several reasons why you should seriously consider joining us at Marty's Law. Some of these reasons include our excellent academic, professional and support staff. With an average age of only 45 years, our academic staff are increasingly diverse. They are highly qualified and highly rated by peers. Our facilities, such as our law library, with more than 23,000 books, scientific journals and electronic resources that are very frequently used by our students, as well as our innovative academic support structures. Secondly, smaller class sizes compared to the norm. A law clinic renowned for its social justice and access to justice endeavours, as well as various student organisations, structures and publications that add to an enriching learning experience. Also, a curriculum entrenching graduate attributes, which focus not only on knowledge, but also on skills such as legal writing and teamwork, dispositions, including leadership, and competencies, including grit, legal ethics, and social awareness. We believe that our recently renewed programs will give you the best possible chance to excel in your professional career. And since we are living in the global world, the various opportunities to study abroad, perhaps for a full semester exchange, or eventually to even enroll for an international joint degree. The law cannot solve all the world's problems. However, it establishes normative standards, protects the freedoms and rights of people, helps maintain order, resolves disputes, and promotes social justice. The legal profession is central to resolving many contemporary challenges facing South Africa and indeed the world, including abuse of power, threats to the rule of law and democracy, increasing inequality and discrimination. Our academics consistently research and publish on these matters and share their knowledge and insights with our students. Equipped with an excellent legal education, you can be part of a generation of young people who are changing the world and our planet for the better. Remember to look past the stereotypical portrayal of legal practitioners and note that much of a lawyer's work is often invisible and there's a role to play in many different capacities other than that of a litigator. You don't need to be an extrovert or an excellent public speaker to be a good lawyer or excel in an associated career. Lawyers and those working in related fields often tend to anticipate, prevent and manage conflict, contrary to the popular belief 
that lawyers only litigate. Studies have convincingly shown that capabilities such as empathy and leadership help individuals be successful in life. We want to help you become not only knowledgeable and skilled in law, but also reflective and socially conscious. You will be the second group to start your studies with our recently renewed program curriculums. And I can assure you that we are very excited about the rollout of these forward-looking programs. At Marty's Law, we have a proud tradition of legal scholarship and we would welcome you as a future change maker in our faculty next year. Congratulations on your provisional acceptance to Stellenbosch University. This is Marty's 101. My name is Lusa Nele Nelani and I'm from all the way in Eastern Cape, Kabecha. I went to Grey Boys High School. I'm 20 years old and I'm studying BA Law and this is my second year. Hi, congrats on your provisional acceptance to Stellenbosch Law Faculty. Uh, my name is Danielle van der Watt. I went to high school in St. Mary's Waverley, all the way in Joburg. Um, I am currently doing my LLM. Before that, I did my BA Law, followed by the two-year postgrad LLB, and I'm happy to be chatting to you today. My name is Michael John Taft, and I've come from Wamuk Boys High School in Cape Town, and I'm in my final year of my LLB undergrad. Congratulations on your provisional acceptance to come study law at Stellenbosch, and welcome to Marty's 101. My name's Meg, I'm currently a final year LLB undergrad student and I went to high school here in Stellenbosch. My name is Alex, I'm from Cape Town. I'm currently studying my LLM at Stellenbosch University, which was preceded by a BCom Law and LLB. I want to wish you a hearty congratulations for being provisionally accepted to study law at Stellenbosch University. My name is Ethan de Toy. I'm 23 years old. I'm a postgraduate LLB student at Stellenbosch University and I was born and raised in Stellenbosch. I went to Stellenbosch High School. My name is Mokhadi Fela Masipa and I am studying the fourth year of the Biak LLB program. I matriculated in 2018 from Cornwall Hill College in Pretoria, Gauteng. My name is Rialine van Eyck. I'm 22 years old and currently in my fourth year of the Biak LLB program. I matriculated in 2018 from the Afrikaans Uwer Maisie School in Pretoria. Congratulations on being provisionally accepted to study law at Stellenbosch University. My name is Thalke Aronson and I have just graduated my BCom Law degree last year and I'm currently doing my first year postgrad LLB at Stellenbosch. I went to Waterstone uh, College in Johannesburg, but I'm currently finding my home here in Stellenbosch. Hello, I'm Dr. Bradley Greenosh. I'm the Legal Education and Student Coordinator in the Dean's Office at the Faculty of Law here at Stellenbosch University. Welcome, as everyone has already said, to Marty's 101. So why did you decide to come and study law at Stellenbosch? Well, for me, the law was the only thing I could think of that will satisfy the variety of interests I have. I found that the law has given me such a broad array of things that about how broad array of information about how the world works around me. And I've really found it interesting to see the impact of the law on so many different facets that I never thought possible. And I came to Stellenbosch purely just to get away from the southern suburbs because I've been growing up my entire life in Cape Town and I wanted to get to meet new people. Mm -hmm. And for me, Stellenbosch was far enough from home, but close enough at the same time. So Meg, why did you choose to study law at Stellenbosch? I decided to study law firstly because I also knew that I definitely wanted to be a practicing attorney or an advocate one day, so law was obviously the clear cut for me. Um, I decided on the LLB because I knew that I wanted to practice, so adding an extra year to branch into other faculties didn't seem like it was necessary for me. And in terms of Stellenbosch, I chose Stellies partly because when I came to the open day, I heard about the law clinic that the faculty is really involved with and I wanted to get involved there as well. And also, I felt very at home here very quickly, partly because I went to school here, so I think it just felt right. Hey Danny, so why did you start, uh, why did you choose to study law at Stellenbosch University? Well, I chose to study law because as the oldest kid, I could study engineering, law or medicine, and I'm real bad at maths, so law it was, yeah. and ended up falling in love with it, so great choice. And I chose Stellenbosch because of the this like student vibe that you just don't get at any other university that I actually saw when I visited with my mom all the way back in primary school and I wanted to be a part of it and here I am. And you, why did you decide to study law and why at Stellenbosch? So for me, I believe the biggest thing was I've always had a big heart for ser uh, service um, and like my community as well. So 
I also wanted to get away. So like the, the Stellenbosch part, I guess, would be I wanted to get away from home. But at the same time, I wanted to be a part of something bigger than myself. And I found that Stellenbosch University would give me that student community. So even though I'd be away from home, I have the opportunity to like begin like almost a new family, enter a new community where I could be just as welcome as a for, from where I'm from. And the law uh, part, um, again, is just the fact that I just always wanted to do something more that's bigger than myself, you know. And my, my goal and my, my aspiration is to one day to be able to like give back to uh, my community and work for, for this country and just to do something about the state of the affairs at the moment. It's not the best, but I have so much faith and hope in South Africa. So I had never been to Stellenbosch University as I'm from Johannesburg and I've always heard a lot of different things and experiences of people from Stellenbosch but predominantly um, some of my close relatives that had studied here had really great experiences and I'd want to get away from home so I thought why not go as far as Stellenbosch. I came and I decided that this was the place for me because of the student campus uh, environment that I really found myself being able to enjoy and get engulfed in being in residence um, as well as the many opportunities that are on and just around campus that provided me the opportunity to spread my wings and literally just grow myself as an individual independent student and just human being uh, in this place. So Thakka, tell me, as a BCom Law student, what motivated your decision to study this degree? Well, to be very honest, when I decided to study BCom Law, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I just knew that I wanted to make a massive difference in the world. And I really enjoyed business and commerce, as well as knowing that law could be a massive tool to assist me in solving problems and changing the world. So I decided that this was the best of both worlds and decided to go for it. What about you? Why did you decide to study BCom Law at Silabosch, Alex? Similar motivation, I'd say. I think. Um... In all honesty, I may have been a fence sitter and not being able to really decide whether law or commerce was my chosen field. But having studied for three years and, and, and finding a good balance of commerce and law, I think I really made the correct decision in uh, pursuing law after BCom Law. Uh, the reason why I say this is because the BCom Law degree provides you with many opportunities to engage in both commerce and law. And they kind of interact with one another. You know, uh, law is not all about precedent and cases. It's about applying your mind to a unique set of facts. And I think uh, studying commerce allows you to train your mind to interpret uh, situations in a different manner, which is helpful in your legal career. So I initially chose BA Law because I'm an English nut, and I thought that I would end up being a writer at the end of it. And a writer with a law degree is better than one without. Um, and then ended up even, I, although I loved the English part of it, I still loved law more. And so I ended up aiming to be a lawyer instead. But I do not regret doing BA Law at all. It learned, I learned so much about writing and reading critically and also broadened my horizons a lot, which is amazing because with law, you'll see that you need to have broad horizons and uh, a broad worldview. So, but that's why I initially chose BA Law and then in, ended up doing my LLB and not becoming a writer yet. Mm. Life is long. <laughs> So for me, it just came down to the fact that I had a broad range of interests. And even though like a big thing for me was always giving back and service and community and stuff like that, I just didn't want to focus on the one thing being law only. So uh, I just thought about what would like allow me to uh, go down this path of studying law, but at the same time allow me to like expand myself and go into my further interests. I've always been a bit of a bibliophile, I love reading. I'm also a person who likes thinking critically. And I saw, I just looked for a degree that would just give me the space to be able to pursue my eventual like, um, goals, aspirations in law, as well as give me the opportunity just to broaden my horizons, like you said. Yeah, you know what I love about law is that we spend the first 10 minutes of the lecture learning the rule and the rest of it is learning about the gray area and yeah. the exceptions. So I think also like BA law helps with that because you learn to live in that gray area. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's like it's crazy like where you come from, from the BA where it's like a free range type of thinking. And then you come into this more formalistic and practical thinking. And I find that yeah. like it just allows you to think way better and critically thinking your way around corners that you may be faced with mm -hmm. like in the law and uh, law. Um, industry and, and the have faculty. debates right yeah most just definitely super fun yeah 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 just like those constructive conversations as well why did you choose to study via galobi 
I enjoy a challenge and this degree is definitely that. It's engaging, it's enriching and it offers me with so much opportunities after I graduate. Why do you want to study Bia Kalabi? <laughs> Ooh, difficult one. So I just felt like I wanted to do law, but then I wanted something with a bit of a commerce background mm. as well. And this was the perfect degree for that kind of thing. So it's also really difficult because Stellenbosch is the only university that offers BIKLB. So I had to come to you know, the law faculty at Stellenbosch University specifically, and I have loved it ever since. Hello everyone and welcome to the recording of Martis 101 and congratulations on your provisional acceptance as a law student in our faculty. I am Juanita Pinar, I'm a professor in private law in the Department of Private Law and I'm also Vice Dean Research and Internationalization and here with me is my colleague Professor Richard Stevens. Baie welkom, my name is Professor Richard Stevens and I am a professor in Handelsweg, specific maatskapijweg. And my interest specifically is in company law, as I said, and especially the structure in the company between directors and shareholders and liability of directors um, for wrongs committed by the company. So, Professor Pinai, you say that you are also um, the Vice Dean of Research and Internationalization. What does that mean? Well, with research, it is not exactly the same as an experiment in a science classroom. But in research uh, in the legal domain, we are also focused on solving a problem, a very particular problem that we have to solve and we have to give a legal solution. So there are various ways of doing that, including also having a look at how other jurisdictions approach similar problems. The result would then be a publication or a book or a commentary, which would be accessible. And remember also our courts refer to academic writings. So it's important that the outputs out there should be of an excellent standard. Now, when you talk about research, what role does students play in research? Do they have a role? Because I can imagine as the Vice Dean of Learning and Teaching, where students obviously will focus on the program, the modules that students take and what content there should be. Do students do research? Well, students can also be involved in a process that can end up developing and changing the law. For example, our legal skills component this year, one of the projects was submitted to the Law Commission and they were commended for their contribution in that regard. But my role as Vice Dean Research and Internationalization is to promote research in the faculty amongst all of our staff, but especially also our younger staff. And that then also brings me to internationalization. So there is that link between research and also reconnecting and investing in international networks. So many of the global concerns, like for example, climate change and poverty, can only really effectively be approached on a global scale. But Apart from that, it is also important for faculties and universities to have international connections and networks. And of course, after COVID-19, we are very eager to reconnect and also to expand our networks. And that is also where exciting possibilities for our students emerge. So if you join us next year and you work hard, you might be able to participate in the exchange program in your final year, in your final semester. So we have various partner, partnership agreements in place. So you enroll at our faculty, but you complete your studies abroad in Europe or in the United Kingdom. And apart from that semester exchange, there's a few other um, developments in, in the pipeline a whole year that you might be able to spend at Cambridge University in the United Kingdom, which is an opportunity we did not have when we started re uh, studying, Richard. Your position sounds much more interesting than mine. Um, but I can also say, though, that the internationalization clearly also touches on some of aspects that I deal with. So as because I'm also the Vice Dean of Learning and Teaching, the program 
and the modules of the program and you would be more familiar with the word subjects of course in school we call them modules so I also deal with what is the content of the module and we are very excited about our renewed LLB program because we want to look at things uh, like globalization, Absolutely. climate change, things that will matter to our students in future. We are currently addressing in our renewed program and that is something I am responsible for but between you and I we work closely together because there clearly is some synergy. I want to ask you something else though, because you wear a dual hat or you have worn a dual hat or two hats no. because you had a daughter yes. who graduated from our faculty last year. And I'm sure that a number of our prospective students and, and specifically their parents are watching us and they would want to know what role do they play yeah. in their children's or our prospective students' success? Can they assist? How should they assist? What message would you give as not a lecturer, but as a parent yes. of an alumna? Yes, that is, that is true. I had this dual role. I was a, I am a faculty member, but I was also a mother and a parent of a law student. And I think there the important thing for parents to remember is studying law is challenging. It is a lot of work and it is difficult, but you need your support structures in place. And parents are part of that support structure. So my advice would be is to listen to your, your child who is also a student and try to put yourself in his or her shoes to listen to the problem from their perspective and then advise accordingly, support and encourage. I've also realized, Richard, that we have excellent support structures within the faculty and also the university. So I would also encourage our students, our prospective students, to approach uh, lecturers in the first instance because they are usually the first person who might be able to help you. But um, if you need assistance, by all means, it is there, make use of it. Yes, and I think I want to agree with that, that although this is not school anymore, in the first instance, you, you should not feel that you are a number amongst thousands, mm -hmm. that you can approach your lecturer and that we have support systems in place to assist. And I think that is a crucial message, not just to our prospective students, but also to parents, that they can feel confident in where their children will be? I think the, at the core of the matter is that we as personnel, whether we are vice deans or lecturers, we have the best interest of our students in mind. So I'd like to just share a couple of the differences that I found between school and university. Firstly, it was nothing what I quite expected because you sort of have this idealistic picture of what college looks like on, uh, on like TV and in movies. But when you come here, there is so much freedom, but so much that you need to actually decide and prioritize what is your actual goal and what are you really looking towards going, uh, that you're going towards. So the biggest difference for me was having all this time and thinking that I'll be able to to manage all of it just because it's right there, but needing to gr take a grip on things that are most important to me for that specific season that I find myself in uh, and making sure that I enjoy the process while I'm at it. Um, because as much as there's all this work that you, you think that you need to get through and figure out, it's about the entire experience in really growing your individual development, your leadership, your um, self-awareness in this experience of university as opposed to just an academic course that you're getting through. So it's the full experience of growing as a human um, that is different to just the, the academic focus that school has. I really want to talk in particular to you as a potential grade 12 or grade 11. Depending on what school you're at, it's quite possible, again, depending on your subjects, that you haven't really been challenged yet. Some of your schools might have teachers that are not necessarily that passionate about the particular module that they are required to teach you. There might be instances where you could pay very little attention to what is going on in class and still be just fine. It might not be uncommon that you don't necessarily have to work that hard in order to do well at school. And some of the schools, unfortunately, and this is, I think, 
a situation nationally, certainly across South Africa, a lot of the schools are very focused in grade 12 to prepare you for those grade 12 exams. They are almost lining you up in order to be able to do as well as possible because obviously it looks good for the school as well in terms of working through, for example, old question papers and things like that. And so you learn and acquire certain skills in terms of how you study at school that are not necessarily transferable at first year level and for the rest of your university career. The first thing that I just want to uh, emphasize, and it's obvious, is that you are exposed to lecturers here who are experts in their field. In many instances, they have either co-authored or written the book, the prescribed textbook that you are going to receive uh, in some of your classes in an area that is always constantly changing and is requiring that lecture to stay abreast of topics. The depth of their expertise is significant. And what is also going to be very unusual for you is what we like to talk about moving from the single source world into this multiple source world. That you as a school student would have been used to your teacher telling you what you need to learn, giving you one set of information that you need to absorb somehow and then regurgitate this back in some of your exams. Now, there might be instances of that at certain stages in your, in your time during your first year at university. But by and large, the most troubling change for you and the biggest area of adjustment is going to be you moving from a multiple uh, or moving into a multiple source world. And by this, I mean the notes that you're taking in your classes cannot on their own provide you with what you need to know, what you need to internalize and understand. You are also going to have to look at textbooks and understand what is written in academic textbooks. At a, at a text level that might be far higher than something that you are acclimatized to academically. There are going to be cases which are written reports of what actually happens in the South African courts. There are things called journal articles, which is other academics that have written about relevant areas of the law in an academic fashion. And you are going to have to absorb all of that information along with legislation, the actual written laws that are applicable in many instances. And you're going to have to pull all of these multiple sources together and build your own understanding, your own interpretation guided by your lecturer about what is going on in a particular subject field or in a particular module. And bear in mind, you're also moving away from a situation where at school, the bell rings and tells you where you need to be. You are given a timetable. Your teachers are sympathetic to you if you, you know, don't feel that well one day and you don't make it to school. They might assist you in trying to catch up and the like. University is too big for that. You need to find where your venues are, your classes are. There are no bells. There's your self-responsibility to find in your own way around university. And yes, your lecturers in a medium-sized faculty such as the law faculty are going to be understanding and are generally very nice people who are human too and you will get to know them during the course of your time at our faculty. But at the same time, we are teaching you to be professionals in the field of law, which means rules are important, rules count. And we try and be as consistent as we can in applying those rules. So if you do things outside of the rules, or you miss deadlines, or you don't submit on time, or you haven't studied adequately, there are going to be consequences. This is something that you will hear from me during the course of your welcoming. University is voluntary, but there are consequences. Biggest difference between school and university, where I begin, it is, uh, it is a trip and a half. Um, Honestly speaking, so like coming, I live eight hours away, eight, eight to 10 hours, depending on your mode of transport. So uh, I, I guess the biggest factor would be the fact that I'm away from home. My parents want you to do my stuff for me. Laundry. Laundry, yes, <laughs> laundry. There's no one to wash your dishes, no one to cook for you. So you really come to your own uh, as your own person, as your own adult, as just living on your own, like independence is a major thing here. And then going to the acad academic side of things, one thing they never told you beforehand is that nothing you did in high school will prepare you for your law studies, which is both exciting at the same time very much like terrifying. Terrifying. Literally, yes. literally. So um, that's be easily the biggest difference. Like you need to come here as open-minded and be ready to learn, be an empty bucket, like a sponge, ready to soak up so much more. Yeah, and like on the point of terrifying, I remember coming here 
and feeling like such an imposter yeah. because it seemed like everyone knew more than I did. I didn't even know what the constitution actually was in practice and it seemed like everyone else did. Here's the secret. No one knows what's going on. Everyone is learning things yeah. from the start. No one is as smart as they want you to think that they are. And you're going to get there. If you put the work in and you go to class despite going out the night before, you'll get there. Yeah. I find like the one thing, especially when it comes to law students, is that we're so good at putting up a front. But uh, at the same time, what you need to come to understand is that everyone's just faking it until they make it type of thing. But then you need to be, be calm and be like, accept the fact that you're taking your own lane, you're walking your own lane. Yeah. This is your story. And it's like, even though there's other people doing it at the exact same time as you are, mm -hmm. you have to be comfortable with the fact that this is my story and won't follow the exact same like a path is a route as other people, you know. And you have to hold yourself accountable as well, because another big difference is your parents are not there, your teachers are mm -hmm. not there to tell you to go to class, yeah. to do the work, yeah. to do the readings. Yeah. Like if you decide, I don't feel like going to class today, and or my, you see your friends aren't, so you think, why should I go? That's your choice to make. Yeah. You'll see the consequences and the marks at the end, but you have to hold yourself accountable and decide what you want and whether you want it. And if you do, then I think Stellenbosch Law is, is the way to go because we all want it. Yes. Very passionate. All of us are passionate about it. What about you, Alex? What has been some of the differences? I think within the context of, of studying law and looking to uh, get involved in the legal profession, um, at the end of your, your, your legal degree, your LLB, you're afforded a, a fit and proper letter, uh, which means that you're fit and proper to practice law in South Africa. And that's not handed to you uh, on a silver platter. You have to really earn it. Not to say that uh, academics in high school is not tough and you have to earn your way through high school, but you really have to apply yourself in, 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 in legal studies and earn your way, earn your right to, to, to be fit and proper at the end of the day. So I think in, in terms of transition, transitioning from high school to, to uh, university, you really have to learn how to apply yourself more, be proactive in your studies, um, and just have the, the bigger picture in mind where you're going and what you want to achieve. So Meg, you've been quite a busy student at, during this degree. You've been vice chairman of the JVS. How do you balance it and what is the JVS? So for context sake, the JVS you could maybe liken to your prefects or student council at your high school, but it's that for the law faculty. Um, and in terms of balance, that's a very good question. I think it sort of came as and when we went about, but we were quite lucky this year because we had a very strong team. So we all just leaned on each other and at the end of the day, it is just a student committee. So as high pressure as it is, um, you're a student first and foremost, so managing academics was very doable. With all the added freedom that comes with university comes the responsibility to manage yourself and your time. So I think planning and managing all of that is very important, but also relax and enjoy yourself because um, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. So um, I would say to balance your life and try to explore what it is that university has to offer. I think that I didn't get the hang of it in my first year. It was definitely very shaky. But slowly but surely, you start to get comfortable. You start to know what works and what doesn't. So it's also just having a plan that works for you specifically. And then um, time management. I watch so many YouTube videos about how to manage your time, and it actually helps me so much. The university certainly has plenty of support structures in place that you will become aware of if you watch uh, any of the other Marty's 101 videos, the main videos, for instance, will talk about the mentor systems, uh, the various structures around clusters and residences and the like. And within the faculty itself, we have law mentors, we have a juridical society, uh, which represents the interests of uh, the students, and we have class representatives in each year group in order to facilitate that integration between students and staff. And of course, there's me, who's also there to assist students who might be struggling academically or referring them to the various central support structures. So in the transition period from my BA to my LLB, the important skills that I've learned studying LLB was that you need to constantly keep a work ethic, you need to keep discipline and you need to be consistent. And I think Alex would also agree with me that it's always important to be proactive when you are doing your work academically and not to be a reactive student. And what I've also learned was a critical thinking and how to, uh, how to apply knowledge to factual situations and not just to superficially study something, but to study something to understand it. And in order then 
to, to use it in the workplace and possibly in the future in law firms that you are going to work with? I started my first year in 2013 and the most important skill I picked up was time management. The freedom you have when coming to Stellenbosch is a big adjustment. So to juggle all the different classes and being away from home was a challenge, but one that has prepared me for life after university. What's the best thing about studying at Stellenbosch University? Um, you know, I came to Stellenbosch specifically for the BIAC LLB program, but since I fell in love with the town, the people and the beautiful scenery that it provides, um, the multitude of coffee shops are also a bonus. <laughs> Um, I think for me, I'm going to have to say it's the people. So I don't know what to expect exactly, but the people have been really great from the professors and lecturers and students as well. That has been a really rewarding experience to get to know everybody and the coffee shops definitely help. <laughs> for the viewers that don't know of this opportunity, uh, Stellenbosch uh, Law Faculty offers uh, this opportunity to go on an international academic exchange uh, to either master's students in their final year or uh, LRB students in their final year. So the second semester of your final year, you're able to travel the world to a, di to a different inter institution, uh, one of the partner institutions with, with the Stellenbosch University. And I was fortunate to, to travel to Italy to attend the University of Bologna uh, for six months, which was an incredible experience, both in terms of an academic experience and a self-development uh, experience. So it's, it's a really a dual uh, opportunity in terms of being able to travel the world, um, experience a new culture, a new academic syllabus, new modules for that matter. So for me, uh, I've been in the community service thing. So <laughs> my plans uh, directly after I get my, so I'm planning on finishing my BA law, thereafter do my postgrad LLB, and my big aspiration is to get into the public sector as soon as possible. So um, I, I want to take a little bit of the road, uh, road less traveled, and that would be um, serving as a clerk to uh, one of the constitutional court judges. An amazing uh, thing about that, it gives you the opportunity to get this one-on-one -on -one or first-hand experience of being in the constitutional court, uh, which your other uh, contemporaries or like colleagues won't get uh, who head straight into the commercial side of things. Mm -hmm. And I want to do that specifically because like, I want um, a route directly to the chapter nine institutions that uh, help keep the state accountable. Yeah. Yeah, and yourself? Well, I, I took the road most traveled because everyone was applying for articles in second year and so I did the same thing. And then I actually have um, my articles lined up in Joburg next year, uh, but I have deferred it for a year so that I could do my LLM yes. because I also decided I wanted to give more before I start taking. Okay. Um, so I, I try to give more to the academic side of things and see if I can eventually cause that domino effect mm. that leads to practical change. So currently doing my LLM and then next year I'll do my articles. Mr. Keva is one of our three-year postgrad LLB students and he is currently in his second year here at the law faculty and in particular I'd like to chat with him about the 31st Christoph Haynes African Human Rights Moot Court competition that took place in Cairo, Egypt this year, in July of 2022. What is a moot court competition? You must get asked this all the time. I do. So a moot court competition, uh, simply put, is a debate for lawyers. So what happens in a moot court competition is we get a hypothetical case with a scenario that seeks to simulate an ordinary court, well, in this case, in the African Court of Human and People's Rights, and in that case, we had to come up with legal arguments. We had to write a legal brief called a memorial, present it to the judges. It was judged and assessed as well. And then we also have to argue orally before a panel of judges or justices from different parts of the African continent. And um, at the end of the debate, the team that argues the best wins the competition. It is absolutely an ex an exceptional experience. It is something that you will never forget. Participating in a moot, even at high school level, which is possible, um, but also participating at a moot at a university like ours. We have a very vibrant mooting culture here, and we have a moot society that tries to ensure that all students at all levels participate. So if you come to Stanford University, first years have a beginner's moot that is quite great for them to participate in. And often we have judges of the Constitutional Court come and assess that moot. But most importantly, you don't have to 
have experience in order for you to be a great mooter. For example, the African Human Rights Moot was the first time I mooted and I won it. So if you are a person who's got a passion for knowledge, who's got a passion for debating and arguing and learning under difficult conditions and also being able to enjoy the experience, then certainly I would encourage you to try mooting, try debating. It is a rewarding experience. And if you've got the passion for it, then you will probably enjoy the experience as well. The skills that I learned at the Stellenbosch Faculty of Law were important for how I was able to construct the very delicate arguments and weave through the very difficult facts that we got in this case. And the second part is to say the experience of the moot court competition has also helped me in how I'm able to come back and plant that knowledge in how I am a student on a day-to-day -day basis. So it was a two-way street, if you will, but most importantly, I think that the foundation that I've got at Salvatore University and the modules that I took specifically aided me in my ability to be able to argue in a very concise and constructive manner, but also to be able to understand the facts and the law, even though I'd never studied international law, I think that the backbone of my legal studies aided my ability to actually grasp international law quite quickly without having studied the, the subject beforehand. We trust you have enjoyed the information video and that you are inspired toward entering the world of law at Stellenbosch University. They say a journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. That's what makes attending university so special. Aristotle already said that educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. A legal background prepares you so that you will never be afraid to raise your voice for honesty, truth and compassion, whilst knowing that you also have to listen generously in order to influence the views, decisions and actions of others. We look forward to being a partner in your journey of discovery regarding the role you would like to play in our constitutional democracy. There are many opportunities for you to pursue in both the public and private sectors of the legal and related professions. On behalf of our faculty, best wishes for your final examinations. Marty's Law looks forward to welcoming you next year. Ons wens jou alles van die beste toe vir die rest van hierdie jaar en sien uit daarna om jou volgende jaar in Stellenbos te verwelkom. Naya Mazela, Kuzulunga en Kosi. Congratulations on your admittance. Oh, sorry. <laughs> How long do we have? Hello. I shouldn't click my tongue on the start. I am recording. Okay, no pressure. Okay, Okay, shout when. Congratulations on... Let me start again. Done. That is it. Fantastic. Oh. <laughs> I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sweating. Glance and ask the question. Okay, so glance, glance, glance. 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 Okay. Walk the other way around. Glance, glance. Just dance and then I'll Okay. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. So why did you come as... <laughs> Just buy anything. The wine farms. Perfect. Nailed it. Okay. Under pressure now. I am under pressure. <laughs> Perfect. But let's go, man. Oh. I want an Ready Oscar. Ready for my Oscar. I need an Oscar. <laughs> Let's keep looking into the camera. Yes. That was fine. Perfect. Okay. Alright. So... Hey, Alex, that was a loaded question, eh? Sorry, I was trying to, like, uh... Okay. <laughs> I forgot what the next question was. <laughs> High school in Cape Town at Bishop Stiles, in college. And um, I found... Oh, that was so good up until the last bit. <laughs> so good. It's um, the order. I didn't I'm not say even going to say where I'm from. <laughs> I'm not even going to say you're from Cape Town. Exactly. Or, 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 or.